what up what up what up this is mike the philosopher here with another one this one is paternity matters episode two all right uh mama baby papas maybe we'll see i'm not gonna hold you let's go in because we all know paternity matters on today's episode of paternity matters your dad was a one of how many possible fathers four four possible fathers her mom found a gun in the summer confiscated the gun so her mom knew about all of it when you remove the h from husband and you just have the u.s us ban it's like the husband he bans around the family Bans. that's what Bans. holds the family together now, i see one of the cast members from cops wise i'm telling my trainer i said you know i think she's checking her brother out Risha, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. So, you know, we're here at Paternity Matters because we know paternity does matter. Yes, ma'am. And we know that paternity affects people in different ways depending on their life experience. And you have a very interesting story. So, you've grown up your childhood, teenage years, and adult life. You've lived with a question of paternity. It has always been clear okay. that your dad was a one of how many possible fathers? Four. Four possible fathers. When I told Leroy I was pregnant, I was about three months pregnant. And um, he was, you know, he didn't say anything. It wasn't like he was glad that I was pregnant or whatsoever, you know. I'd say, well, you know I'm carrying your baby. And he just looked. Last time I seen him before I seen him when she was pregnant with him, her other baby daddy was going up the steps, and I was going down the steps. <laughs> so I didn't even know that was one of her baby daddies. So, I mean, it could have been his back baby. I don't know, because the girl was on, she was getting high, she was on crack, mm -hmm. you know, and she was doing her thing with everybody. Simple. And that's God, honest God truth. At that time, you know, I had stopped getting high and all that good stuff, you know, because I really love to get high. Uh, you can't make this shit up, folks. You cannot make this shit up. You know, that was that thing, you know. Um, wow. By me, you know, being out there and wandering around, and I, and I know who I had internet you know internet with and everything um it's intercourse but i understand what you're saying let, let me ask women a question let me ask women a question if you are a known i guess you could say drug addicted uh person okay a crack addict if you are a known promiscuous woman who have men coming up and down the stairs at the same time, if you are known to get around and smash everything 50 going north, maybe because you wanted more drugs, maybe because you was trying to earn money for drugs, who knows? Do you still feel that when you tell a man you are pregnant with his baby that he don't have a right to be questionable questionable questioning that like sometimes i feel like it, no matter what the situation is women feel like men shouldn't be questioning them yeah i I'm, I'm pregnant with your child i mean that's what she told leroy this guy right what is he what do you expect him to say oh okay yeah yeah whatever you say whatever you say sometimes i feel like women are surprised that men are surprised or or men question question paternity like i've seen enough of paternity court and maury to know that half the babies ain't the fathers at least half statistically you take both of those shows I'm 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 serious. Fifty percent of those dudes are not the father. It is a crapshoot every <laughs> every episode, and there are some men out here in society raising kids that ain't even theirs, and they think that they're theirs. 
Hell, I may even be one of them. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I had all my kids tested except for one. And I don't I don't doubt her. Uh, that's my that's my girl. But I don't know. Papa's maybe. You know. I'm not I'm not questioning. I'm just saying Papa's maybe. But it just it just baffles me that some women are surprised when men question paternity. You were moving the way you was on drugs and sleeping with men to get money for drugs and you have the nerve to be surprised when I question if I'm the father or not. It's just you know, she knows she, she know she knew she was having intermittence with people, okay? <laughs> it's intercourse, but you know what I'm saying. She knew she was having relations with people, but I, you know, it seemed like she was surprised that he questioned it. And to this day, Leroy is like, look, man, <laughs> you see how she was moving? You would be questioning it too. And I think that's that's fair. Because again, 50% of the kids ain't even the fathers. And we on the hook for the next 20 years, psychologically, emotionally, and especially financially. We don't have a right to question. It's just it's a fair question. Let's go in. Either way it go, I'm going to be satisfied. Because in my mind, it says him. But, you know, other ways, it's saying something else. I've always uh, wanted his attention. Um, but the relationship was never a relationship. Um, I'm, I, I'm sorry for stopping it. But let, let, let me say this. i seen Leroy. And I seen uh, this gentleman right here. That don't look like his son. He looks a lot like his mother. But Leroy is a, a small, tiny little dude. Who. Who have every right. <laughs> to question if that's his son. In my opinion, that is not his pops. But I could be wrong. He could just just took care, took after his mother. Who knows? But look like he have a little bit of vitiligo. I wonder if Leroy has vitiligo in his his family. Um, but not for nothing. That don't look like his son. But what I like about this episode is I think they're going to do a paternity test in this one. So, uh, without further ado, let's go in. Um, it's, it's so bad, um, I don't even really know his full name. Really? That's how bad it is. Um, you don't I, know his full, full name. name. Wow. It's like a lot of names. That's Look, Judge Lauren Lake. Oof, my goodness. Girl, so fine. Let's go in. He has like a lot mm -hmm. of aliases that he has, but... Uh, Leroy is the only one that I knew. That's what you know. That's what I know. Um, did you ever say, like, Mom, if there were multiple possibilities, mm -hmm. you know, and look, I always I always say on paternity court, and I say even on We The People, like, look, shame, leave shame out the window. We right. here now. Let's talk about what really is the deal. I say, Leroy, you know Richard yours, he looked just like you, you know, like that. So at the time, <laughs> you know, he didn't, um, we didn't take no blood tests or nothing like that. You know he looked just like you, Leroy? He don't look, he don't look jack like Leroy. What are you talking about? I could be wrong. It could be his son. I'm not, I haven't seen this before. I don't know what's going to happen. But it sounds to me like what I was talking about. She was surprised that Leroy was questioning it. Seriously? It baffles my mind. It baffles my mind. You know he looked just like you, Leroy. That boy is twice as big as Leroy. <laughs> Again, it could be a son. I, I promise I haven't seen this before. Uh, but the surprise that women have 
it, it's almost as if women feel like they they don't ever be wrong with anything like you know you could be wrong right you know you could be wrong it's a high pro- probability that you're wrong <sighs> let's go in that you know so it just went on and i just raised my son up you know he was still coming over and uh giving me crack instead of money uh all this stuff you know and as risha grew up you know i started back using drugs so they came in and they took my children mama's baby papa's maybe we'll find out on paternity matters Welcome to Paternity Matters Street Talk. I am your host, Shanika Taylor, and we're about to hit these streets to see if the people know their TV dads. All right, hey, what's your name? Josh. Josh, and where are you from? Kansas City, Missouri. All right, you have 20 seconds to name five TV dads. Are you ready? Sure. All right, The Simpsons. Homer. Roseanne. Uh, Dan. Dan. Full House. Danny. Danny. Family Matters. Carl. <sighs> Freshman's. Phil. That was Freshman to Bel Air, but that's okay. Modern Family. Oh, which dad? <laughs> name, name anyone. Uh, oh man. You got Phil. It. There you go. Ding, 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 ding. I feel like you've been the best con- competitor out here. All right, so can you fill in a blank? Paternity matters to me because fatherhood's important. Why is it important? Kids need role models. Are you that role model? Yeah. Look, he's confident. Is he the role model? I hope y'all enjoy Paternity Matters Street Talk. Enjoy the rest of the show with Judge Lauren Lee. Next, we head back to the men's den to continue our conversation with the guys. Idris seeks counsel under the covers while Will is caught up in co-parenting chaos. For me, the biggest challenge was probably the transition from being married and going through my whole divorce. Then we had a, um, another young lady who was end up in a mix or whatever. So um, I how did the lady end up in the mix? She just <laughs> slipped on a banana peel and just you know landed what? up in so, the mix right up in your marriage. So, so what this, happened? All right, so this is interesting. Summer one day I was driving, getting ready to park my car. Somebody almost hits me, and I'm getting ready to cuss them out. And then out comes, you know, I see one of the cast members from Housewives. I noticed her and her sister Uh walking into the gym. I said, okay, she get a free pass. So I'm in there, um, (laughs) I'm in there working out every time, uh, every time I look over there, they looking at me. I'm telling my trainer, I said, you know, I think she's checking her brother out. So, you know me, I said, you know, um, you got to seize the opportunity. So I go over, you know, introduce myself. This is while you was married? Yes. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Tell it like this now. Tell you. So ch- All right. Yep. Yep. You can't. Okay. Uh, the women gonna get on me if I don't. I don't. I don't. You know, lean on this brother a little bit. Look, you can't do that when you're married, man. She didn't slip on a banana peel and <clears throat> fall on your Johnson. She does. That just don't happen. So, yeah. You. I, I think he know he messed up. And especially, especially if a child was produced out of this situation, that is super messy. Uh, if you having kids while you're uh, married, uh, that's just a big no, no. So uh, let's hear the rest of the story. But I had to lean on bro a little bit well, a lot because uh, he already messed up. So let's go in. Check this out. The reese. So check it out. So um, my ex-wife, one of the things she did on the side was she does makeup. Okay. So I said, well, shit, I could put her on game. So I said, you know, they're on oh. Housewives. She does makeup and everything. You was I could network. I'm the co- create. I'm the connector and everything. <laughs> so um, Will and Derek are laughing at you. So she was going through a divorce with her husband. And then at the same time, you know, I, I just let it know straight up, you know, uh, you know, I'm married, you know, things aren't great and everything. And, uh, you know, I just put it out there. I remember one particular night, uh, we went out for dinner. 
Mm -hmm. So uh, my wife's calling me. She's like, uh, you know, where are you at? It's getting kind of late and everything. Because you had never introduced them to do the makeup. Not yet. Right. I didn't so, forget about that. Was, that, was, that, was, that was, I, I, I'm, I'm still waiting on that part. I, mean, I, was, waiting on that I, part. I was waiting so, for your wife to that, get the makeup job. You know, well, then I'm having a good time. And then my wife called me up and said, it's getting kind of late. Where are you at? I said, oh, I'm in my office handling some business and everything. Uh -oh. She said, okay. So about 10 minutes later, I checked my phone, I get a text message. It's a selfie outside of my office and uh, from my wife. Oh, <laughs> oh man. She <laughs> was up at the office. Yeah. We had already been going through some stuff. I said, yo, I'm done with this. Take my ring off, put it down, and then I leave oh the house. Oh my God, it came to that? Oh yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. That was, okay. that was different. We, we, we get a hotel room, we're having a good time or whatever. And then it's like one o'clock in the morning, sleep or whatever, the hotel room door open. Oh, you got the wrong room. She's like, no, I got the right room. It was my wife. Oh, and she came in no, with, um, no. she, came, <laughs> oh. <laughs> she came in the room with my daughters and everything. Oh, and then uh, we have no clothes on. And she said to my daughter, you see your punk ass daddy right there? Oh, I mean, no. he's just, oh, oh, oh. Wait, then, <laughs> wait. This is terrible. Yeah, I gotta say he was a punk ass at that point. <laughs> Handled it totally wrong because she damaged her daughters for life doing that. And she alienated her daughters from her the, their father for life by doing that. And she trauma, I mean, she, she just traumatized the girls. At li, li, ladies. This guy is all kind of wrong. I'm not skipping over that, okay? But don't include the kids in adult stuff, okay? Men hardly ever do this. It's, this is a woman thing. You, your husband, y'all messed up. Y'all terrible. Y'all on bad terms. Don't drag your kids into it. Please stop doing that. Don't drag the kids into it and traumatize them. Them not having a good relationship with their father is not going to hurt their father only. It's going to hurt them too. Okay? They need their father. And if all they do is look at, look at their father and being with somebody else, They're going to lose trust. It's going to, it's going to, it, 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 there's no good that can come out of that. Other than you as a woman kind of win in favor with the kids. And, and a lot of women do this. They'll, they'll, they'll make their husbands or exes look bad and then make themselves look like like they have a halo like like part of the failure of the marriage wasn't a part of their issue too or what a part of their fault too so what ends up happening is the 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 the, the girls are going to be the kids are going to be alienated from their fathers and they're going to look at their mother with a halo and then mothers will what I what I call uh, gain God status with their kids because mother is the end all be all at that point, and that's how a lot of women want it. They they want they want they want to they want God status with their kids. They can do no wrong, no matter if they find a mother with another guy. They're not going to even trip. They're not going if they could they could find a mother in that same situation, and they are not going to even trip after this situation. Well, mama had to get her groove on, so I understand mama will wait outside, okay? Let them get a couple, I mean, that, that's kind of crass. But what I'm saying is, ladies, stop doing that. Meanwhile, they have a bad relationship with their father and all just no good can come from that. He can alienate himself, take them out of the will, not come to their mat weddings or not walk them down aisles and, and not not um support them through school or anything like it, it just it's just it's just a bad idea to alienate fathers and i think this is why uh 
Lauren Lake created the show to say, look, paternity matters. Now, again, this guy is all kind of wrong. OK, but she was wrong even more. Why? Because she put the kids in the middle of it. This is adult situation. This is adult problems. You don't add the kids into your mess. If you're going to argue, go in your room and be quiet. Argue quietly. Don't let the kids hit, hear that. They get traumatized by that stuff. They don't want to hear mama and dad arguing all day. They definitely don't want to walk in a room where one of their parents is, is, is fornicating, fornicating. People do stupid stuff to traumatize their kids. Stop it. That's even worse than the original offense. Because now you're dragging innocent lives and, and people into it. And it don't need to be that way. Anyway, let's go back in. Coming out of this process, I spent $35,000 for lawyer fees, mm, yep. right? Mm, mm. And when I get to the final hearing, this judge didn't even want to hear anything I had to say. Right. In December, I found some inappropriate TikToks that my daughter had on her phone. One TikTok video was her with a gun. And I later found out that it was a BB gun, but it looked like a real gun. So, of course, I'm concerned about it. Well, me and her mother is going through this issue as well. We don't get along at all. So she said she didn't know nothing about guns, nothing like that. So I asked Callie, you know, what's going on? She said her mom found the gun. She ordered the gun through Amazon. Her mom found the gun in the summer, confiscated the gun. So her mom knew about all of this. So I played a video for the judge in the courts. The judge turns around after the video is over and looks at me and said, Mr. Crosby, you're in the military over 10 years. You mean to tell me you couldn't tell that that was a BB gun? I said, excuse me? I said, your honor, respectfully, her school wouldn't care that that's a BB gun. Exactly. Law enforcement wouldn't care that that's a BB gun. If she had it in her hand when they pulled up, Absolutely. She he says to me, do you really think she will pull this gun out on law enforcement? In my mind, I'm thinking, what the hell? What, what are we talking about right now? <sighs> exactly. This is the unfair treatment that fathers get in the courtroom. I know because I got it myself. I got unfair treatment in the courtroom. It's not justice. What happens is, here, here's what I think. I think the court system is owned by corporations. I think the court system is owned by corporations. And corporations want nothing more to make, than to make more profit. Court systems don't care about fathers, especially black fathers because corporations don't care nothing about black fathers. Your job is to pay, pay, and then pay. We deal with money. We don't deal with fairness. That's, that's, that's what core systems is, is it, it's really, it's, it's really just uh, about the finances. People really go to court for monetary monetary reasons. When you go to when you go to get a divorce, how much you gonna pay in alimony? When you go for child support, how much you gonna pay in child support? We 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 care about money here. We don't care about if your daughters get caught up with police or she get caught up in school. We don't care. Okay, we don't care. All we care about is how much you're going to pay. That's it. And how much you're going to pay your lawyers. This is a monetary system. This is not a moral system. Okay. That's why they don't care if fathers see their kids. We, we don't care if you see your kids. We're not going to even govern that. We care about money. That's it. Okay, so your daughter got caught with a, a, a BB gun or whatever. What you want me to do about it? D does that have anything to do with money? That's what the judge is thinking. No, it don't have nothing to do with money. Pay child support. I don't care if you, she get caught up with a BB gun. I don't care if you see her. 
just pay. That's that's all I'm here to do is to find out how money is going to get spread from one party to the next. That's that's my only job. It's ridiculous. This court system is ridiculous. Let's go in. It was just it was ridiculous. To me. And so the court system ridiculous, has left you, know? you feeling disheartened. What I will say to you is what you describe as well as something that we dealt with often on paternity court and we the people, both of my court shows is that co-parenting chaos. How do I manage to have strong, healthy relationships with each parent when my parents are in a full court battle? Next up, a story of forgiveness. My younger siblings had had an accident and I was asked to go to the hospital to visit him. Mm -hmm. And I, I had gone once, but going there and seeing him as a teenager, it was very traumatic for me. When I got home, my mother asked me if I went to the hospital and I said, no, I didn't, I told the truth. And she said, well, wait till your father gets home. So when he came home, he had alcohol on his breath. My mother told him, you know, what happened. And when he asked me, I told him the truth. Just long and late, my father took a water hose from a car. He split it with a razor and he beat me to the point where oh. he drew blood. <sighs> so from that moment, I wrestled with the fact that I knew I did something wrong. But to me, the punishment that was beaded out to me, you don't do that to an animal. And you held that resentment for how long? How about, did that affect you? I ended up picking up a drug habit and an alcohol habit. I started mm. drinking and drugging over a lot of these issues, a lot of things going on. I checked myself into a rehab and um, everything changed in terms of how I wanted to do things with my dad. So I went to him and mm. I said, Daddy, I said, I want you to come and sit down and talk with me. I want to tell you some things yeah. about my life. Yeah. I want you to tell me about your life. About your life. And he said, Kevin, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. He died. Oh. He died before we could do it. Oh. So I was angry with God. I said, you know, you let me go through all of that stuff. And now when you clean me up, I got a chance to do this and you take them away from me. But little did I know, God had a plan later on. Are you a parent? Yes, I am. My oldest child, 22 years old, suddenly died. Mm. And and I had to go to work every day and look at children, young girls her age, and wonder why. But nevertheless, God kept me there and I kept doing what I had to do. Yeah. I also learned some things in my parenting and in my fathering that helped me also be able to forgive my dad because I didn't do it to perfection. When Father's Day comes, just the first thing I do when I wake up, I said, Daddy, I'm so glad you gave me a desire to work. He taught us work. And I said, because today when you look around at some of these men, Judge Lauren, if we were being paid, some men, if they were paid to sleep, they would wake up and quit. Ooh. They have no, no, no. And that, and that comes with fatherhood. You said it, not me. They, 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 they don't see a man going out of the house every day to a job. Yes. How important that is. When you remove the H from husband and you just have the U.S. us banned, it's like the husband, he bands around the family. Bands That's what family. holds the family together. You in your work have tried to shift that cultural environment with your Heart of the Father event. Before we close, I want to learn more about that. Father's hearts are now being turned back to their children. Okay. We help homeless men come back, uh, bring them back into society, connect them with their families, help that them with beautiful. substance abuses. At night, I work with the youth. So I'm bridging the gap on both ends. So Mr. Strong, I don't know what to say. You are just exemplary. You're extraordinary. I'm so proud of what you're doing with the Heart of the Father event. And I'm so happy that you're taking your healing and you're bringing it into the community. You are a living, true example of that. I thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you, Judge Lauren. It was my honor. Oh, it was mine. It was mine. Thank you so much. On the next episode of Paternity Matters. Fulton County Sheriff, open up. Open up the door. Three big dudes look like they need to be playing for the Atlanta Falcons with guns pointing at me. I served this country. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I put my life on the line. I, I've lost soldiers only to come back here and have to fight for my children. Regardless of what the, um, you know, the test come out to be, you know, I'm going to kind of be sad, but at the same time, I'm glad you know, that it's about over. Okay, Brenda from Charlotte, text me. She said, Dear Judge Lake, I did the unthinkable. I slept with my 
best friend's boyfriend. Okay, Brenda, it was a drunken night, should have never happened, and now I'm pregnant. I'm not in a relationship. I value my best friend more than anything. Woo, do you? And I really don't know what to do. All right, um, Brenda, hey, it ain't nothing you could do but come clean with this. If you value your best friend, you don't want to lose your friend. Listen, the boyfriend had a part to play in it as well. And ultimately, if he is your child's father, he deserves to know. So the quicker you get to the truth, I always say, don't take the long way to the truth. Just get there. Tell the truth. Hey, family. Yeah, and, uh, you know, <laughs> I do question if you valued your friend that much. You knew what you were doing. Um maybe the whole time you were jealous of your friend that she had this guy uh, apparently you was he se he probably seen the the jealousy you had probably seen a little twinkle in your eye and was like you know what she wanted she can get it and look he ain't no better he ain't no better for this um going against his girl and smashing her best friend he had to know that this is going to separate them uh, selfishly, he said, you know, did what he did, had no honor, um, you know, no honor among thieves, so to speak. So this guy is trash himself for uh, getting in the middle of their friendship, which is going to be damaged. However, I think women have a talent for getting over stuff like this more so than men do. Um, I think that there's probably still a way that they can save their friendship, but I don't know if, if, if like, I'll put it this way. It's probably more possible if that baby is not his, if that baby is his, um, I don't think there's any coming back from that. I think that friendship has is dissolved. And I think that, uh, her friend will probably just be rid of both of y'all at that point y'all figure out your paternity but i'm done with both of y'all y'all got a life together for the next 20 years y'all y'all deal with that i'm gonna I'm a move on and i i wouldn't blame the first woman uh, uh an ounce for canceling both of y'all and, and just moving on with her life i had a story time i had a well i well my ex-wife now ex-wife she had a friend and her friend kind of went back and had relations with one of her exes now uh she i mean she was married to me at the time but uh it was still one of her exes and you know <laughs> she found that to still be a violation you knew that you knew that was my dude you knew that was now me as the the husband i'm like you know should i feel a certain type of way why would you care if they got together like you ain't with him no more you married to me um so a part of me did feel a way that she was even concerned about this like why do you care but she still felt it was a violation and uh you know you shouldn't be going back with long long story short she ain't even friends with that chick no more she ain't even friends with her even to this day they don't talk they've never talked again uh and who knows what happened in that situation ironically since our divorce she started talking back to her ex <laughs> So that told me a whole bunch that we we just wasn't destined to be together because uh, I'm not saying that she was romantic with him or nothing like that. But she seemed very much more forgiving with him than she was with her. Uh, now that I look back on it. But, um, you know, I like I said, the first chick, I think she'd be very much uh, well within her rights to be rid of both of them. Um, and and a, another side note, my ex is uh, very, you know, me and her are on good terms. My ex-wife, we are on good terms and she's, uh, you know, so it wasn't just her ex-ex that she reached out to, but she reaches out to me a whole bunch, 
probably because we have a daughter. I don't know if we would have that relationship if we didn't have our daughter, but uh, she reaches out to me a ton. But um, maybe she's just friendly with all her ex exes and just, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, what do you all think about this whole situation? What do you think about what I said? I'd be interested to know. Hit the like, share and subscribe. I will catch you in the next one. And I think we're going to get a paternity test in the next episode. We'll have to see. Um, but stay tuned for that one. I'll, I'll cover that one too. Peace.